Hi guys! If you're anything like me, you're probably pretty shocked by all of the news that's been coming out of Attawapiskat First Nation recently. Now if you don't know where that is, it's a remote Aboriginal community in Northern Ontario and the seemingly endless epidemic of suicides and suicide attempts by its young people is absolutely heartbreaking. Now, I think that we know what the causes of this situation are. If you take a look at the other First Nations communities across Canada that have, like Attawapiskat, declared a state of emergency due to a mental health crisis or suicides, many of them are really remote communities. Some of them even fly in, which means that the only way in or out is by charter plane or for a few months in the winter by ice road. These communities are very isolated and the cost of living is sky high because everything has to be shipped in. Now, obviously every community is different and has its own issues, but we've been hearing some pretty shocking stories from Attawapiskat about overcrowding. You know, 20 people crammed in a house, people having nowhere to go because there are no recreational activities. Now the kids themselves have their heads screwed on straight as far as I'm concerned. Take a look here at what they say that they need. They need recreational activities, they need sports, they need some connection with their culture. These are really basic things that every child deserves and needs, and that should be the case whether they're Aboriginal or not. Now, of course, another factor is the residential school system, which, as we know, ripped children away from their families, taught them that their culture and their language were wrong, and in many cases physically and sexually abused them. And unfortunately, this isn't ancient history. The last residential schools were closed only a couple of decades ago. It's living history. They're still dealing with the consequences. Kids and adults alike need to reconnect with their culture and reconnect with their language. Just as an example of something positive that's happening that I've just discovered recently, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce their name, is this group that goes into remote First Nations communities, works with the kids there, they kind of draw out and help them to express what they want to show about their community and teach them how to produce a music video. It's amazing. Take a look. <laughs> see this is very positive. Well, what about non-Aboriginal Canadians? I don't know about your education, but I managed to get through 12 years of it hardly hearing a peep about the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit in this country. And that's pretty amazing considering what a core role they had in the fur trade and the different relationships that, for example, the Huron and the Iroquois had with the French and English traders, which I didn't know until university, let alone learning anything about their culture, their language, the distribution across the continent even. Really basic stuff. And did I know that the residential schools were still in operation when I was in junior high school and even high school. So we were in the dark for a long time, but we're not anymore. Now we know what happened. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission has brought out an unbelievable amount of information that's going to take us years to digest. And that's what we need to do. We need to educate ourselves and find out about our own history as Canadians and about the Aboriginal cultures that existed before Europeans came, so that we know who we are. Just to make it clear, I'm not talking about feeling guilt for what our ancestors did because we're a nation of immigrants. You know, a lot of us as immigrants or the children or grandchildren of immigrants, our ancestors weren't here. That's not what it's about. It's about learning about who we are as a nation and moving forward together, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal together. I don't think there's any easy answer to what's been happening, but we can start educating ourselves. We can support Aboriginal Canadians' efforts to educate themselves about their own culture, to learn their own traditional languages. These are extremely important for any culture. Now I've just been talking today about the Canadian situation, but obviously everything I've said uh, applies with minor changes to America, to Australia. And I'd be very interested to hear what you guys think, you know? What did you learn in school? Do you have Aboriginal neighbors? Uh, do you live on a reserve? You know, what's your relationship with your community? Let me know in the comments below and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. with me. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to try and upload every month-ish or so, um, so if you'd like to be notified when I post something new, please subscribe, and if you have anything that you would like me to talk about, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you. See you next time. Mm -hmm.